Good evening. I'm Rex Loy with New Song Church, and welcome to our Worship at Home. This evening, we will be celebrating Worldwide Communion, an opportunity for us to break bread and dip it in the cup, along with Christians across the globe, around the world. I would encourage you to pause the video for a few moments and to set up for yourself some communion elements so that when the time comes during this, the worship service this evening, you can break the bread in your own home and dip it in the cup and that you might feel that comradeship, that communion with other Christians around the globe. Now pause the video and then come right back. As we prepare to worship this evening, I would like us all to focus upon what it means to take communion worldwide, knowing full well that Christians of all denominations are, are celebrating communion this weekend. There are Christians that are doing so in caves, there are Christians doing so in, in upper rooms, there are Christians doing so virtually like we are here this evening. Christians around the world from all different languages, all breaking the bread and remembering the sacrifice that Jesus gave for all of us. So if you will, would you simply close your eyes for a few moments and consider all the Christians around the world. Consider the different situations in which they're living. Consider the poverty that so many of them are existing in. Consider the struggles of their lives. Realize those who have lost their homes to hurricane and flood. Realize those who have left their homes due to wildfires. And consider for a few moments those who have lost jobs and as a result lost their homes and who are living on the streets or sleeping in cars. And as we break bread later during this service, may we feel a compassion and a communion with Christians everywhere. Now let us begin our worship this evening with a word of prayer. Lord God, you are good beyond all that is good. You are fair beyond all that is fair. In you is calmness, peace, and accord. But all is not calm and peaceful in our world, not in our nation, not in our schools, not even in ourselves. Jesus prayed that we might be one, one in spirit, one in union with each other, and one in spirit with you. But we are not one. And our attempts at unity have been a series of fumblings and failures. Remove us, O oh God, from the mistrust of others. Erase the partisan contentiousness that divides our nation. We pray, O oh God, for our president and for those associated with him who have been infected with COVID-19. And we pray for our country, guide and protect us during these times when we are most vulnerable. On this World Communion Weekend, heal all that divides us from one another. Give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of all people everywhere. Help us to accept and to celebrate our differences. Remind us that you have set a table big enough for all people, a table with room enough even for each of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture that I've selected for this evening may seem like a strange passage to use on World Communion Weekend, Worldwide Communion Weekend. It's from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's a story that most of us know fairly well. It's the story of Zacchaeus. Let us hear now from the Word of God. Jesus was passing through Jericho. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not 
because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be a guest in the house of one who is a sinner? Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I have long since forgotten how many couples I've united in marriage during my ministry. But in almost every case, I have asked the couple how they met each other. And it's always an interesting story. But in, in the last decade or so, I've been surprised at how many people preparing to get married initially met one another through online dating. I know I've married several couples who met through eHarmony. Now, being a married man, I don't really know anything about online dating, but I do love the commercials for uh, FarmersOnly.com. And I have been intrigued by a dating site called It's Just Lunch. I like the implications there. Apparently, those who are tagged into that site have the opportunity to see pictures of each other and to communicate back and forth with each other. And then if they decide to, they get together for lunch. And it's just that. It's just lunch. There are no strings tied, no strings attached. Um, they, they meet in a public place. They have lunch together. It's only for one hour. And then after that lunch and conversation, they have a choice. They can go their separate ways, which I assume many of them do. Or if they felt some kind of a spark, they can invite the other person to have lunch again or to go out to dinner or to have a date, whatever. Sometimes it's just lunch. In our scripture this evening, Jesus is passing through Jericho. And in Jericho, there lives a man named Zacchaeus, who is a rich man, and he is also a man who was deeply hated by the citizens of Jericho. See, Zacchaeus was a tax collector which means that Zacchaeus worked for the Roman government. It means that he had the authority to tax anyone he wanted at any time he wanted for any amount that he wanted, which was basically like giving Zacchaeus a license to steal from whoever, whenever. Zacchaeus was hated. He was a rich man. It was a rich man basically because he has cheated all these people in Jericho. So now, Jesus is passing through Jericho. The crowds are all gathered around to see Jesus pass by. Zacchaeus wants to catch a glimpse of Jesus. So Zacchaeus climbs up in a tree and is looking down, watching Jesus go by. When Jesus gets to the place where Zacchaeus is, the scripture says he looks up and says, Zacchaeus, let's have lunch. And Zacchaeus comes down. They have lunch. Now, Jesus could have said any number of things to Zacchaeus. Jesus could have stopped and put his hands on his hips and looked up at Zacchaeus and said, Oh, so you're Zacchaeus. Or he could have said, Uh-huh, Zacchaeus, we need to talk. 
But he didn't do that. He saw Zacchaeus and said, let's have lunch. And we're told that the people of Jericho were not happy when they saw this happen. They were angered because Jesus was going to have lunch with the likes of Zacchaeus. I assume there were probably some people who decided they weren't going to follow Jesus right then because he was going with Zacchaeus. But there were probably other folks who simply shrugged their shoulders and said, it's just lunch. But it wasn't just lunch. For after spending a little bit of time with Jesus, Zacchaeus comes back to the crowds and tells them that he has promised to give half of everything he owns to the poor. And he promises that if he has defrauded anyone, if he has stolen from anyone, if he has taken more than he should have from anyone, that he will replenish that fourfold. Zacchaeus is a changed man. Why? Because it was not just lunch. You know, about, about a month and a half ago, after George Floyd had been murdered in Minneapolis by police officers, Black Lives Matter was having protests all across the nation. In fact, there were protests all around the globe, but especially here in the United States. And, and I'm sure you all, you're all familiar with what happened outside the White House during that time. There were so many protesters outside the, 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 the gates of the White House. So many people insisting that we, that we do away with racism, insisting that we establish policies that promised equality and guaranteed equality. So many people angry at the status quo. And the president, knowing that all those people out there were so angry at him, decided that he needed to be seen in a better light. He needed a photo op. And so the law enforcement officers were told to clear a path to make the crowd disperse. And so the law enforcement officers with tear gas and billy clubs and rubber bullets dispersed the crowd. And the president and his entourage walked out of the White House grounds, walked across the street to the church. The church locked down and boarded up. Doors locked because of COVID-19. The, the windows boarded up to prevent vandalism to the property. And the president stood there in front of that locked down, boarded up church and held up the Bible in hopes that he would be seen in a better light. I have to wonder, if Jesus would have been passing through D.C. instead of passing through Jericho, what would have happened? I have to wonder if Jesus had been in the crowd and had been listening to the protesters and what was going on in our country. If Jesus had stood there and had his eyes stung with tear gas and, and, and felt cool milk being poured over his eyes to cut the sting, if he had felt the rubber bullets, if he had been hit by a billy club, if he had been in that crowd that had been dispersed, what would he have thought? What would he have done? 
what would he have said? And in my mind, I can imagine Jesus stopping by the entourage and saying to the president, Donald, let's have lunch. Let's have lunch. And if he had done that, there would have been so many people standing back, shaking their head and losing faith in Jesus and saying, why is he going to spend his time with the rich and the wealthy and the powerful? And there would be others who would be standing back, shrugging their shoulders and saying, it's just lunch. But I think a lot of us would be dropping to our knees and saying, Dear God, don't let it just be lunch. Let it be a new day. Let it be a time when we start encouraging equality. Might it be a day when we start speaking with love instead of with hatred? Let it be far more than just lunch. This is World Communion Weekend. My emotional attachment to World Communion Weekend um, it's really gone through uh, many gyrations over the years. When I was a child raised in the Methodist Church, Worldwide Communion was one of the few Sundays we just didn't go to church because to my parents' perspective, that service just lasted too long. We didn't need to sit there and watch all those people go up one at a time and have communion. When I was new in the ministry, I, I, I saw it in a different light, and I sort of celebrated the idea, that the idea of there being this, this globe and, and, and Christians all around the world in union and in harmony, breaking bread and dipping it in the cup. And, and now I realize in recent years that a, a, lot of, a lot of churches don't even participate in world communion. A lot of them don't even recognize that it's being done. And I have to admit, there are lots of times when I'm just not real happy with a lot of other Christians. And I have to be honest here, you know, that there are some times where I, I don't like the idea that they're taking communion at the same table I am. But I'll need to get my own forgiveness for that. And this year, worldwide communion is being experienced for the first time, really, virtually, online, almost around the globe. And, and, and some churches are concerned because their parishioners are, are taking bread that hasn't been touched and blessed by the priest. It's different this year than usual. It's okay to be different. But it can't be just lunch. It has to be an opportunity to make ourselves better. It has to be an opportunity to allow ourselves to be drawn closer to the Almighty. It can't be just lunch. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, in some way, 
we ask that you might reach down and touch every loaf of bread that is being broken during this weekend. We ask that you might lift up every cup that's being raised in communion with you. And we ask, O oh God, that you allow your spirit to run rampant through each and every one of our lives because, God, if nothing else, we pray that communion is not just lunch. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare to approach the Lord's table this evening, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite poems. It's, um, it's a poem written by Nadine Stair. It was written when she was 87 years old. She was dying of cancer. She was a patient of Bernie Siegel. And it's, it's hard to know, this is, poem is out there in so many different versions, it's hard to know which one really is the original. And um, in light of that, I'm just reading the one I like best. If I had my life to live over, I'd pick more daisies. I'd make more mistakes next time. I'd relax, I would limber up. I would be sillier than I have been this trip. I would take fewer things seriously. I would take more chances. I would climb more mountains and swim more rivers. I would eat more ice cream and less beans. I would perhaps have more actual troubles and fewer imaginary ones. You see, I'm one of those people who lived sensibly and sanely hour after hour, day after day. Oh, I've had my moments. And if I had it to do over again, I'd have more of them. In fact, I'd have nothing else. Just moments, one after another, instead of living so many years ahead of each day. I've been one of those people who never goes anywhere without a thermometer, a hot water bottle, a raincoat, and a parachute. If I had it to do over, I'd travel lighter than I have. If I had my life to live over, I would start barefoot earlier in the spring and stay that way later in the fall. I would go to more dances. I would ride more merry-go-rounds. I would pick more daisies. The point of this to me is that we don't have our lives to live over. But we do have a life to live now. So let's come to the table. Let's break the bread. Let's remember what Jesus has done for us. And then let's decide that we're going to make a difference in the world with the time that we have left. Come to the table, please. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. And having blessed and broken it, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in like fashion, after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup. And having given thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink ye all of this. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call us all to remember. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.